All right, people, so let's start. And a uh, little change of pace. In fact, it's something quite exciting because the aquaponic greenhouse, uh, there's something to it. All right. So welcome to Neil and Richard. But yeah, let's let's dive right into it. So it's going to be a pretty packed five days. We've got um, you know the whole build from the structure to the living systems and some automation. So it's quite a quite a treat. I was just looking at reviewing all the work that we did, and we should start there to get a perspective for what the possibilities are. The possibilities are still grand as ever. I mean, the productivity that we've observed, and we're keep. We're still keeping data on on a project. We have a aquaponics log. Yeah, I mean the productivity is insane. The pictures look beautiful, and this this could do a lot of a lot of good work if if replicated. And I think also at the same time, I mean we've got the most open source state of art you can find anywhere in the world on the topic. And I kind of remind myself that. Uh, by looking at all the footage, and I'll, I'll go through all of that, but just for perspective, it's uh, you still can't find any good documentation, like in terms of like a working, viable, economically productive system. That is not to be found. Like there are people who do this for a living. Uh, I don't see anything that's striving for the kind of level of integration that we are, in terms of all the systems. So, it's a huge huge level of integration and innovation that has to happen and whoever operates it has to be highly skilled if they do it at the, the kind of level that we do. So obviously there's some blocks to learning and information and uh, yeah so I mean just as we start make sure I'm recording that as we start just just think about think about like you know what can we all do to make this better and to our specific goals, next step would be to do a, a viable production business out of this. You can look at things like either installing attached greenhouses in front of people's houses or detached greenhouses. You can be talking about uh, a productive CSA type of operation. Welcome, Richard. Thank you. Good morning, Richard. Yeah. Richard. Yes. Okay. And like in the fact, yeah, much, much cooler than Richard. <laughs> and we should actually start with introductions and goals because I'm going to share my goal right now. I've seen the potential of a thousand plants per month. We've done it. A thousand plants per month out of an 800 square foot greenhouse. Uh, that's if you take a look at the productivity of a greenhouse like a CSA style thing. Um, amazing. Can, and then. Uh, that's one potential that we can develop as like you know even right here you can deliver you know grow your stuff and and deliver to local customers and that's not even talking about things like the cash cash cows like like the the greens the microgreens like we actually haven't done microgreens in a, in, a, in our greenhouse uh, that could be added to it so there's still plenty of innovation to do and integration left and so my question is yeah how far you know what can we shake down in this time because all, all the time we improve it we make improvements what can we shake down next time and how far can we get to a to an economically viable model that people can replicate because once you can show that you know say like a thousand bucks you know like if you sell one lettuce plant at a dollar you know thousand bucks a month right there not counting fish or anything else just just say from the greens you know yeah there's there's huge potential so um before going further, yeah, let's just go around. Like, what what are your goals for the, the aquaponics? We are going to go from ground up, full build, so the glazing, the the structure, the ponds, the towers. Uh, there's a bunch of subsystems that we can decide on what which which ones we want to do, and then automation both for watering and actually planting. We do have parts for automated seeding, and we can run that off our universal access system, for example. So that's that's an option we have. Um, so. Yeah, I want to see how far. Uh, this time, actually, it's going to be one of these things where we build it just like the house, and it's going to be for a repeat workshop. So basically thinking about three-month cycles where we grow it, 
um, and possibly even leave it. It's only going to be a 16 by 16 with all the systems. But the next time around, maybe we build the next one while the, the old one is operating and people can see that at work so that we're kind of shifting one to the other uh, for successive workshops. So it's going to be one of those things that are more modular. So kind of thinking more like, okay, how can we pop up a greenhouse? Uh, like if we have all those parts, all the modules, we can readily pop up a greenhouse and say, say we need to produce for, you know, lettuce for <laughs> and greens for the kitchen and stuff like that. So it's like ex for also exploring the modularity aspect is just like with the, with the house, we're going with a, um, well, something that we're disassembling and, and making more and more modular. Um, so thinking about like as we build it, well, don't build it, yeah, build it more, more in a way that, more modular, just more modular so that um, you have more options like in terms of flexibility with it. Yeah, so that, that's a goal. Um, so let's, let's actually go around so, and uh, introduce ourselves for the new people and maybe your goals or how long you're staying um, as far as this workshop is concerned or, or the longer term. Hampus. Great. Uh, hi, Richard. Hi. Um, I'll be here till the 1st of December. So my goal is just to have the whole inclusive experience. Hydroponics is not something I've been looking at before. Uh, aquaponics. Aquaponics. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I like the uh, idea of automation and see how sleek you can make that process of, of growing more food. Uh, mm -hmm. So it'll be interesting. Paul, I'm here for another couple of weeks. I'm interested in the hybrid collaboration part that we're all engaging in. I'm Curvis. I'm here for the uh, tractor deal. So if I go into next month, I mean, depending on where, it's going, yeah. I'm here for the tractor deal. Mm -hmm. uh, that's fine. Uh, I'm also Paul. Uh, I'm interested in uh, Hi, <laughs> building building my building my own home, and then um, I land in Arizona, and I also want to regreen the desert. And so the greenhouse feels interesting to me. To, there's a lot of sunshine. There's like 300 days of sunshine in Arizona, and uh, I'm interested in CB and and everything. I want to build a tractor and all of that too. So. How long are you here for? Oh, end of December. Uh, apprenticeship. 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 Yes. <laughs> uh, hi, folks. Uh, Richard. Um, just got here last night, and we'll be here for 21 days through the uh, end of the, the larger 3D printer um, build, and then I'll come back for the CEP Roto build in November. Um, have some land in Mississippi. Want to build a community and uh, you know, get some skills, get some ideas, get some uh, network and. Yeah, just have a lot of fun. So this is my vacation time for crying out loud. So yeah. I, gotta, uh, yeah. Yeah, I try to use it as, as well as I can. You live in New York City? Or? I do, yeah. I'm from New York City. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm Eric. Uh, back on the South Park Bowman. Um, looking forward to the greenhouse. I'm here for the end of the month. Um, see how we can make things and get things going. I'm Penny. Um, I'm here because of my brother, Kurt. Um, but I, I came for the tiny house bill and definitely the aquaponics. And my goal is to make sure that every offspring of my mother and father has their own house and their own green. Mm -hmm. nice. uh, I'm Neil. I just got here uh, last night as well. Gonna be here for two weeks. Uh, I'm planning to build a hydroponic greenhouse soon, but the aquaponics one is of interest because eventually when I have more land, I want to do that because. It'll also produce fish and some peat for chicken and, and, and uh, mm. mushrooms, hopefully. Uh, I'm also interested in the tractor build because I want to be able to build certain machines like that because I'm also planning on basically getting a bunch of land and starting a farm and as much as we can uh, be self-sustaining. Why hydroponics as opposed to aquaponics? Uh, just because of the space I have on like a third of an acre with a house on it, so I don't have like a lot of space for uh, fish. So I think yeah. hydroponics is kind of easier with space. Yep. Um, and you know, all I have to do is just add the chemicals for the for the feed, uh, food for the plants. But uh, when yeah. I have more land, I, I definitely plan on doing aquaponics. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, sure. I, I did have a question, but everyone else could. Okay. Uh, well, I'll ask you a question, Richard. 
What's up? Um, well, just because you asked him, um, I was curious uh, why you did choose, uh, you know, like aquaponics versus hy hydroponics versus like aeroponics in terms of, uh, that, that was a route that I had considered, you know, going with, you know, water um, scarcity and just efficiency, things like that. Um, at least for some things, obviously you can't use aeroponics for everything, um, but for a greenhouse. Yeah, we did both, and uh, based on the results of each, we're going with the aquaponics okay. as a more robust system. I'll talk. I'll talk. I'll show you what we did awesome. before. Uh, Ken. Uh, I'm Ken. I'm here for the uh, apprenticeship, so I'm from December, and uh, yeah, my interest is in aquaponics. I do have a. I did set up an aquaponics uh, setup back in Indonesia. Yeah, I just want to see what the OEC one is like. You don't have plants in yours, or do you? You're feeding some plants? plants? Oh, you got some plants going on? Okay. Oh, it's cool. Yeah, maybe share, s share some more pictures. Okay. Because well, it's, it's going on <laughs> going on right now. Cool. Natalie? Um, my main interest is housing independence for myself, and then from there, um, that is the stability needed to do things that have the rest of the world. So I started with that, and um, I just uh, I worked with Marcia on an organic farm, <laughs> like what, like, <laughs> like what twenty years it? ago. Yeah, almost <laughs> like twenty years ago. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, and um, and I just sort of kept up with what he's done um, online, and sort of watched OSC from afar, and have uh, always wanted to come down here, up here, and. Um, clean what I could, and that's what I'm doing. It's a great, great experience. So. Mm -hmm. Wes? Well, I, I came here to OSC because I wanted to liberate game developers to work mm -hmm. on whatever they wanted to. Liberate game developers! <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out the best way to do that. That's why I'm here. Okay, uh, so a bit of overview. Uh, let's see, what do we got for over? So, anyway, as far as the, the five days, so we got five days to do what we can. Structure is day one. We're going to do 16 by 16. We'll talk about that. Ponds, yes, ponds and fish. Uh, we'd like to do actually trout, so we have to pick up some trout if you want to do that. <laughs> trout is cold weather. So unlike tilapia, tilapia, they, they die off if you don't heat in the winter or if you get into low temperatures. So we can do the trout and have this... We're going to try to see how long into the winter it can survive. And we also have the option of actually injecting some, some just heaters, as in electric heaters, because we've got a whole bunch of PV that we might, we can connect up to it, photovoltaics if we want to. So uh, that's the pond. Towers, beds, gutters, shelves, like towers. The main attraction here is the towers, which effectively allow you to use say that eight or ten feet of vertical space as opposed to one plant per square foot you've got 20 plants per square foot and that's that's the real advantage there beds you want to also integrate some beds into it gutters like for growing duckweed and azola uh, that's also a part of the uh, waste filtration system shelves i'll talk more about shelves but shelves that can be watered that once again, like all this was with intent of use vertical space, like shelves. I'll show you what we did with shelves, how that, that looks. And then um, we can do on a fifth day, yeah, and there's more here. There's like worms, there's worm towers, mushrooms. Uh, that's what we've got, uh, spawn and stuff. Uh, we can set that up, but I'll, I'll talk more about the construction set for what we can do here. Uh, automation, watering, and planting. So actually it turns out that the, like, the seed injector is just an injector pump and an XY motion system, XYZ motion system, so we can do that readily off our universal access system, plus a small vacuum pump, plus needle sets, and a th little 3D printed mount for that. So we can add the, the cedar head as w to our website as one of the implements for the universal axis. All right. Um, so first of all, main wiki page. Let's look at what what's been done before. This is um, this is actually man. This if you dig into this page, there's a ton of stuff here. And let's talk about first maybe like what the promise was. I'm glad to introduce the six-day ambitious build of the very first one. 
Our what system is a modular library of interchangeable parts before building that can be used to make many different greenhouse configurations, anything from a small to a large structure, that's standalone nice. or attached to an existing house, we'll build something for like private use or for commercial production. Our base system is founded on aquaponics, which is the combination of fish and plants where the fish provide the nutrients for plants and the plants purify the water for the fish. The build is also an experiment on the minimum space required to feed a full diet for two people with only 15 minutes of effort and maintenance. This cat is full Our scope includes the five kingdoms, meaning a complex web of plants, animals, fungi, algae, and the soil food web with the final products being everything from eggs to fish to vegetables, small fruit like strawberries, mushrooms, spirulina, algae. And this is assisted by decomposers such as mushrooms, which process straw, worms, red worms, and black soldier fly larva, which can process waste. We don't have black soldier fly. Now well, the challenge to this, of course, will be in an integrated system like this with 100% biological control, it will be the integrated pest management. I so to this end, we've invited one of the leaders in the field of, of biological pest management, Ron Whitehurst, and to complete our strategy on, on health of the greenhouse, we're including compost tea, brewing, and a build of a, of a brewer as part of this build. At Open Source Ecology, we're pioneering the concept of what we call extreme manufacturing. It's a rapid swarm-based build with multiple teams working in parallel, building multiple modules at the same time to allow an incredibly rapid build, such as this 800 square foot greenhouse in a period of three days, and then another three days to install the biological systems. Yeah, so that I mean that's that still is like uh, effective build times. The the first very first one was a six day workshop where we did the whole 800 square feet, and it's a modular system where independent teams can build the the wall systems, and then they're all put together at the very end. Same technique as before, and you could kind of see that implication there. We're just putting modules right next to each other. We'll work on a concrete foundation pad there, and we can put a sill plate or mount it like directly on right on a right on a concrete. This is treated lumber, so like if you get water in there, it doesn't matter. So, I mean, it's it's going to be really wet inside, like the humidity in there is going to be high. So you got to use treated lumber. Um, the, the overall, overall system, system can be amazingly productive. productive. Did, Did you know, know that we can produce four pounds of fish per day in a low stocking estimate from our ponds? Three thousand gallons. Mushroom ponds are designed to produce one pound of mushrooms per day from one square foot of floor space while providing carbon dioxide for plant respiration. Did you know that the black soldier fly larvae eat vegetable waste and offal and produce five pounds of larvae per day from an area of one square meter? This can be used to feed both the fish and the chickens. We have never got Chicken that slash because red worms. Worms. Like the, the black soldier fly, we just couldn't do it. The guys that, we, so we were doing the black soldier fly and it, we, we were promised some guys collaborators came over saying okay we'll teach you how to do that there's there's refined techniques for how you actually get to prop at least from what we hear uh, how you propagate them because yeah you can do them but then they'll they need to breed and they need very specific conditions mm -hmm. so we never got to that that information because it turned out the guys wouldn't share it so oh. we yeah I mean this kind of stupid stuff once again like you need this amazing integration and you need those critical elements of how you actually make that work it, you know, you can make a crappy system, but the really, really good stuff, that's precious. So, uh, we, so if anybody's got the BSF know-how, let us know. I know how it works for fruit flies. I don't know about the black soil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure. And, like, you can probably, like, do you think, like, a even, like, if you talk about feeding the fish, because there's external inputs, either grass or, like, whatever you put in it, but, like, could bug lights feed the fish, too? Like... Or does that completely fry the 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 bug? And I, I don't know. Um, but maybe there's some innovation to this. This was intended to be another closed loop where the worms help decompose chicken droppings and the chickens eat the worms. Beds, they work. Extremely all in all, the good part is this is all designed as modules, all open source, so we can replicate a small or a large greenhouse as you need based on your needs and the design language. So if you'd like to see this entire build from start to finish, then please sign up for the workshop. Thanks for listening. Yeah, Peter McCoy, uh, 
helped us on the mushroom part. So he wrote the book called Radical Mycology. No, uh, or yeah, or what is that? That guy. Um, so he's really cool. And then Ron Whitehurst helped us on integrated pest management. So we got into a lot of that. And there's some some good things you can do for things that would otherwise